Previously on Dreamhouse. Things are really starting to heat up. The timber frame for the home and wine tasting venue went up. It's our home and it feels like our home already. But the project was still way behind schedule. We're still over two months behind. And way over budget. We're maybe 12,000 over budget so far. Now the push is on to finish the windows, doors, and paint. Everything takes longer, everything's more expensive. The clock is ticking toward a new baby. In less than three months, he's gonna be here and we're not ready. And the dream is about to suffer a major setback. Probably just a couple of teenagers. There's not really a way to completely lock the house up. On day 136 of construction at the Mackey's Vineyard in Northern Virginia. It's just larger than life. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. The massive 30-foot timber frame is finally framed in. And seeing that front porch for the first time today is... Yeah, that was huge. The main level of the home is designed to double as a wine tasting venue, complete with a stage for live music. You can see where the catwalk is going to be in a, a loft level. And then looking straight in front of us, there's going to be the bar, the kitchen behind it, and then a gift shop behind that. And then, of course, the back stairs going down to the basement. The family will live in the basement. Yes, it will function as a business and, and an event space, but at the same time, it's our house. And now it's time to close in the structure with windows, doors, and insulation, and shingles for the roof. The sooner we get the plywood, uh, the tar paper, and the shingles on, the better. The tight budget is already forcing some tough decisions. We cut back on windows throughout, you know, upstairs and downstairs just because it's such a big expense. Yeah, we probably cut, I'd say, tens of thousands of dollars off the budget. But at the same time, I'm always nervous that there's not enough lighting. I don't like it to be dark. And the holdup with the building permit at the start of construction has the project way behind schedule. The frame was supposed to be done two and a half months ago. And that's pushing back the start of work on the inside of the home, which Stephen and Shannon plan to do themselves to save money. It's terrifying. Now that I see the size of this place and the scope of it. And the delays mean the sweat equity will hit just as their new baby is about to arrive. We're almost in the third trimester. It just blows my mind how fast it's gone. Until the new house is finished, the Mackies are squeezed into a tiny one-bedroom rental house. I'm definitely going to get anxious. There's an enormous amount of scheduling and, and work to be done yet. There's some bumps in the road ahead, absolutely. You just have to believe that it's going to happen. And before the roof is finished, it's kind of a shock to the system. You're like, oh, OK, it's, it's go time. I mean, we have to make these decisions now. Critical decisions must be made about the lighting over the wine tasting bar. Before the roof gets finished, it's important to go over any light fixture or ceiling fan locations. We can go ahead and run our wires and poke them down through on top of the roof as opposed to coming in underneath and running wires. One thing when you're doing lighting in a frame ceiling, you want it to be effective, you want it to be functional, but at the same time, you want it to be unobtrusive. There's a ceiling fan right in the middle. I think they'll just drill a hole straight down through that ridge, and then the ceiling fan fixture will hang there. You really have to think those things through. Otherwise, you know, there goes a million dollars for a place I don't want to be in. It's a lot to take on around full-time jobs. They take a lot of focus and a lot of dedication, I'll tell you that. And time is running out. I'm not going to be able to wait to get in here. I'm not going to be able to wait till it's done to move in. There's just no way. It's like I'm anxious already. So, I mean, as soon as we can get it, as long as it's safe, I want to get in here. I know there is a ton of work to come and a lot of work that he's going to have to do. At this point, it's like having three full-time jobs. Yeah. I mean, there's the Monday to Friday, and then the vineyard. And then building a house is a full-time job. This is no time for a major setback. What can you see? I see your head. The stage for live concerts is too high to be seen from the tasting bar. Whether it's weddings on the weekends or corporate retreats during the week or live music performances on a Friday night, the, the structure has been designed to support these kind of events. The plans call for the stage to be a full foot lower than it is. So a foot lower puts you at my belly button. I mean, it's a significant difference. It's a significant difference. So we lowered it. For that purpose. For that very reason. 
It's tough to tell from the way the, uh, the plans show whether it's supposed to be one way or the other. The crew raised the stage up so it wouldn't conceal any of the home's timber framing. We put it on top of the beams, trying to expose every bit of beam that they have. That'll drive you nuts if that's not the right height. I'm, I'm less worried about me. I'm more, more worried about people complaining that they can't see the musicians up there. Well, you can't. And that's what's going to happen. I guess the sight line was the most important thing to them. And by lowering the floor inside of the beams, the sight line was better. It's got to come down. It's got to come down. And because Stephen and Shannon have the plans on their side, the budget will not take the $1,500 hit. Use joist hangers right there. Yeah, they got to redo it. If that's a miscommunication on our part, then we'll take care of it. We need to lower down, recess it inside of those beams. That will probably be a cost that we'll have to incur. Now's the time to fix it. It's their screw up, right? So it doesn't cost us anything. No, it's not going to cost us anything. It's just going to be something that we'll, we'll end up eating. The most important thing is to make sure that they're happy with it. And the fix can't happen soon enough. I'm six months pregnant, around 26 weeks. Everything's coming by so fast, and in less than three months, he's going to be here, and we're not ready. <laughs> South isn't ready for him yet, so it's a lot. And financial tensions are getting worse. It's got its own carrying case. What kind of fancy little level did you get that needs its own carrying case? And vandalism hits the dream house. Probably just a couple of teenagers. I would like to see who done it. On day 168 of construction at the Mackey's Dream House in Northern Virginia. Oh, they turned out so great. The first windows and doors are going in upstairs. Those are perfect. And the roof is finally finished. That was nice to see because you can really start to see it. Now it's starting to feel like a house. But the roofing has run over schedule because putting on the dormers took longer than expected. I understood it was going to be two weeks. It's been three weeks now, or the biggest part of three weeks. And that's putting Stephen behind schedule on his sweat equity. It's here. It's over. It's time to, time to get rolling. It's good to start getting dirty. Stephen hopes to save $100,000 by finishing the wine tasting bar and the basement living quarters himself. So it'll be door, water heater, door, washer dryer, door, washer dryer. It's tight. It's tight, it's yeah. Not... It's not any tighter than the rental. It was critical during our budgeting of this for me signing on to, to do a lot of the interior work and, and pulling all of my own audio, video cable, and stuff like that. And job one is finishing the master suite and the adjoining nursery. He's a monster. <laughs> Two and a half months, so maybe two. This is big. <laughs> Look at that. The only way to really figure this out is to get in here and start building some mock-ups and cutting some material and just trying to get a feel for the space. The mock-ups will allow Stephen to figure out if everything will fit. If we screw it up, we only have to live with it for 10, 15 years. <laughs> It's a struggle just to find room for the tub in the master suite. After working long hours out in the vineyard to come back and be able to take a soak in your own spa right in the own bedroom, we're like, OK, that's our treat to ourselves. That's your tub. Hey, okay, plug it in. <laughs> There's no water in it yet. It's all right. We wish it had some water in it. <sighs> the only thing tighter than space is money. Wait a second. You were going to the store last night to get a chalk line. That chalk line turned into a laser level. It's got its own carrying case. What kind of fancy little level did you get that needs its own carrying case? Just settle down. Oh, Stephen. The siding is already taking a huge bite out of the budget. We're going with barn board. It's going to be a little more expensive. The barn board siding costs $2,000 more than was budgeted. 
And that's not all. And then we're gonna try to do a tin roof just on the porch. And that'll add about 5,000. We're like 30 grand over budget already. We're gonna go $7,000 over just on siding and, and roof. But at the same time, we think we're getting some really notable aspects to the outside finish. So we're, it's worth it. We're pretty excited about it. But this is something nobody planned for. So when did y'all first notice that? When did y'all first see it? Someone has scribbled graffiti on one of the beams in the timber frame. The house is open, probably just a couple of teenagers coming by at night. I would like to see who done it. Until all the doors and windows are installed, there's no way to lock up the house. I told Steve and Shannon, there's not really a way to completely lock the house up. The people, you know, are coming by and letting themselves in that, you know, tools are going to start to disappear or supplies. I don't understand anybody's mentality of doing that, but it'll, unfortunately, it'll probably happen again. We're also looking into maybe getting a phone line installed early and hopefully getting a security system in place. We'll make it disappear, but we'll probably have to sand that whole beam right here just to get the sand marks and get everything to disappear out of there. So we'll have to pretty much resurface that whole beam. But as the schedule intensifies, there are more problems. It's going to be a bit of a pain. I guess we'll find out, won't we? And the vineyard needs immediate attention. I need to take advantage of having these open weekends and some decent weather. Otherwise, this is going to pile up. Nearly six months after breaking ground. I like that. Oh, that is going to be cool. The last and most unique window is about to be installed in the Mackey's home and wine tasting venue in Northern Virginia. It's going to be a bit of a pain. The star shape is a last minute design change. When we were little kids growing up, just driving up to our grandma's house, there's these two barns that sit on the side of the road. The vents in the peak of them are in the shape of a star. Shannon was very close to her grandparents as well, and we miss them all dearly. So it's just sort of our way to, uh, to keep them around and, and keep them with us. I didn't know the exact dimensions on it or anything, so I was a little concerned about that. The $1,900 window may not fit. Just looking up here and looking at the window, it just looked like it was going to be tight. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Once we figured out when we had enough room to make the window fit, it went relatively easy. I was just blown away, just absolutely speechless at, at how cool it, uh, it turned out. That's actually the first one I've ever set. I've never you ever do one. Not a star window like that, not that cheap. Just such a unique feature, and I, I'm just so happy with, with how it turned out. But now, the crew must custom cut the trim and siding to fit around the star. To get the angles on it, we're going to take scrap pieces up there and trace it and mark them. Then I'll bring them down and cut them. And the schedule is growing tighter by the day. We thought originally, you know, maybe we'd be in there January, February. Now it's maybe Stephen and I and the babies can move in in March. The house still won't be ready then. To make up lost time, the plumbing and electrical crews are working around each other in the basement. He needs those faucets here to see just which way it's going to work. And Stephen isn't here to help. The vineyard needs work. I need to take advantage of having these open weekends and some decent weather and be out here. Otherwise, this is going to pile up. If the trellises aren't rock solid, they could collapse under the weight of next season's grapes. It's essentially immovable. That thing will definitely support quite a few tons of grapes. Trying to stay proactive and trying to stay ahead of the game. Not something you can play catch up on later. Because once the vines are growing, you can't exactly tell them to wait. <laughs> And there are other pressures that won't wait. As much as going on with the house and the vineyard, it's finally, you know, the week before Thanksgiving occurred to us that in less than two months, we're going to have a baby arriving. And now the focus is really turning to that. 
the act of putting together the cradle really gets you in baby mode. So while I'm out here doing this, she's at home trying to deal with that, and it's not easy. I really wanted to be in the house by the time the baby came. Absolutely. We <laughs> missed by a mile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the house is jam-packed, and we're just running out of space, and now I'm definitely in the nesting mode. He could come at any time. There's definitely a sense of, you know, we're, we're almost there. But despite the struggles, Stephen and Shannon are getting their first taste of success. And there you have it. <laughs> Viognier, Eau de Viva Vineyards. I still got to put the labels on. It really turned out, man. I think we got seven cases of this stuff. Stephen and Shannon made the wine in the kitchen of their tiny rental three months ago and bottled it in their garage. From just a wild idea just over four years ago to actually having the, the finished product you know, in the hand, I mean, like, we're, we're doing it. All of the dreams are becoming reality. This batch is just for practice, but it will be enjoyed. Christmas shopping's done. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what everybody's getting this year. <laughs> so here's our, our Vivace Viognier, our Cab Franc jelly, which is mighty tasty. Bottom line is we did it. We really, really did it. And that, uh, that feels good to say. But success is coming at a price. Is the project controlling us, or are we controlling the project? It seems like the closer we get, the more impossible it seems. But what went up must now come down. Framers made a mistake. They didn't read through all the plans. Rejoice! And exhaustion takes its toll. I'm definitely nervous about him right now. I felt bad. On day 200 of construction, the Mackey's dream house is about to take a huge step backwards. Framers made a mistake. They didn't read through all the plans. The live music stage over the wine tasting bar must be torn down and rebuilt at the proper height. It seems like Mr. Mackey was right. But the crew that built the stage has moved on, so the framing crew will have to tear it out and build it again. We're going to have to tear it apart and just reframe the whole thing. We don't know how they built it, so we got to just basically start tearing something apart and figure that out as we go along. It's going to be a pain. <laughs> it's not going to be as easy. Especially since the crew is working nearly 30 feet up. We didn't want to do it when we first seen it. <laughs> it was like, oh, we'll find out. let somebody else do it. I got Joyce. But it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. And halfway through the day, the crew can finally start rebuilding the stage. These joist hangers will nail to that strand board right there. That's how that's going to stay there. I would like to say the hard part's over. <laughs> It's a lot to go through to drop the stage just a single foot lower. Now's the time to fix these things rather than get in there and have a couple of shows and have people complaining and then saying, you know, we had the chance to fix that and we let it slide. But the fix puts the schedule behind yet another day. I can't imagine getting any bigger. So I'm hoping maybe he'll be early, but I can't, you know, there's no way to know he'll come when he comes, but very uncomfortable. <laughs> And two days later. Oh, that roof is just amazing. I'm already envisioning, you know, the porch swing and the rockers and stuff out front. And the first coat of paint is going on the barn board siding. That looks absolutely awesome. Man, it's nice out here. I'd rather be out here painting than inside pulling wire, I'll tell you that. But Stephen has to make up for lost time. Basically what I'm doing is I'm running all of the, the behind the wall stuff for audio, video, telephone, and data. And the wiring needs to be finished before the drywalling can begin. Closing in all of the walls are contingent upon me finishing this. There's just a lot more pressure. And there's no money to hire help. 
A lot of the AV stuff was not in the initial budget. Not something I've done before, so I think I ended up pretty much buying enough conduit to do about four houses. Hello? Let's see. That was one, about 120 more to go. <laughs> I worry about Steven a lot. He works non-stop, and he can work harder than anybody I know. I think I've completely underestimated the amount of work for this wire pulling that he has to do this weekend. I thought the whole idea of those things were supposed to make it easy. He pushes himself to the breaking point all the time, you know, and uh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely nervous about him right now. I think I just drilled the hole for nothing. He pushes himself until, you know, he can't hammer anymore. He can't do this anymore. gets hurt. Oh, you didn't want to do that. Oh, boy. I just stuck that in my knee. <laughs> I know I can pull it off. It's just a question of how, how long is it going to take. But time is running out. He's realizing that the baby's coming and, you know, in two weeks, three weeks. Hopefully I can get it all done and put together before the baby comes. I mean, that's that's, that's weighing very heavily on me. <laughs> so now he's in full panic mode, complete full panic mode. So he's going to be here all weekend long trying to get ready. And it's soon. It's real soon. Sooner he gets here, sooner he can get over here and get to work. That's right. Ain't no free rides. Just kidding, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Dreamhouse. The race is on to get the house ready for drywalling before the baby arrives. I thought, OK, wow, I think it's happening. I think today's the day. My job is coming up. <laughs> a little nervous. But the schedule is blown apart. We're four months behind schedule now. He's just tired. Yeah, he's frustrated. He's on edge. And construction hits a wall. The lines are blurred everywhere. There is no work. There is no home. There is no construction. It's just all one big mess. That's next time on Dreamhouse. <laughs>